a survey conducted by Manpower Group in 2013 on manpower shortage showed two areas which facing global labor shortages which are highly skilled workers and engineers. The result of this study suggests that both Vietnam and the world are faced with a challenging task to meet the labor demand of high-quality engineers for the economy. With the goal of sustainable development, the government of Vietnam is trying to coordinate with foreign organizations to raise awareness and attract students to participate in learning and training in engineering and applied science. Among those foreign organizations, including the Sterling Group, representing 13 leading universities of scientific and technical research of the UK. Sharing Vietnam Today presents a member of the Stelling Group, Aston University, a leading UK university in industrial engineering. everyone and you're watching Sharing Vietnam on VTC10 Netviet. In our today program we welcome Mr. Um, David Webb from the Aston University from the UK and he will share with us some of the things that Vietnam can do in order to boost up the passions for the engineering um, major of the Vietnamese students. Thank you Mr. David so much for joining Sharing Vietnam. Uh, first of all for the viewer to get to know a little bit about yourself can you share with us some of the things that you have been doing especially in the field of um, teaching and lecturing about engineering in the UK okay well I was originally a physicist so my first degree and my PhD were in physics and I taught for 10 years in a physics department but 13 years ago, I moved uh, to an electronic engineering department. We would also want to know about the current situations of, uh, of students that study engineering in the UK. What are the percentage of students that choose to uh, take part in this program? Um, and is there an increasing number in this, um, in this percentage? In the last 13 years, we've seen some quite significant develops developments in the education in two areas really there's been an increased focus on professional skills so here we're talking about uh, training the students to be better communicators uh, training them about ethics about sustainability helping them work in teams on the other side though um, we've effectively changed the syllabus making use of modern technology so that the students can get much more hands-on practical learning experience so they learn by doing rather than by listening to people like me talking. I think worldwide but certainly in the UK we see quite a significant growth in student interest uh, in being engineers so student numbers are going up and it's just as well because the professional bodies uh, are telling us that over the next five or six years we need to uh, more than a 50% increase in engineers in the UK. Now, uh, when we reflect on the um, demand of the market in the UK, there is a certainly a similarity well, with this uh, increasing demand of engineer engineers in Vietnam, especially those who are highly trained. With these demands of the market, uh, the labor market, um, Vietnamese students would like to seek out to um, UK's university. Um, so, can you share with us the strengths of the UK education in the engineering major? Well, I think um, I guess the UK has always had a good reputation for education. Um, but in engineering now, I think it's particularly deserved because, as I say, not just in, in my institution, Aston University, but in, in many other leading institutions, there's been much more of a shift to practical learning and in, in particular for getting people, for getting the students to start designing things. So not just understanding, in my case, electronics, but even in the first term, they start designing electronic circuits. And these are the skills that are really needed by industry. Uh, and so if, if a student has a, a good degree, they have a virtually 100% chance of employability in the UK. And in fact, internationally, an engineering degree is a passport around the world, basically. 
So we're here today with you in the event of a sharing sessions of Sterling Group from the UK um, who will share some of the opportunities to get educations uh, in the UK, in especially in engineering stream. So can you share with us some of the opportunities that Vietnamese students will have and what are the criteria for them? So it's very helpful if uh, when you're coming up to applying for a scholarship, if you've got some experience that might be perhaps in a job that, that in some way involves engineering, it might be showing that you're actually interested in reading about engineering, or for example in electronics, you might do electronics as a hobby. So these are all signs, if I'm trying to make a judgment about who deserves the money, I'm looking for somebody who's both good and highly motivated, and these are signs. So if you can get those extra things in your covering letter in your CV, that's a great help. Is there a significant um, advantage that um, the students who are trained abroad in engineering um, would be diff uh, would have um, that compared to those who are trained in Vietnamese schools? I mean, regarding about technical skills, they are basically being taught similarly all around the world. Well, as I say, from, from the from the technical point of view, it's because now, from a very start of the degree program, we're teaching the students to think for themselves, to design, not just to understand. So we're bringing out creativity. Creativity is not something that you usually associate with science and engineering, but it, actually, it's vital. You know, the best engineers producing the, the things that people want. If you look, for example, at Apple and all their lovely things, yeah. their engineers are really creative, and that's something that we're working hard in the UK to give them. Um, we do have very good facilities as well, so the resources are there to support these these activities too. Recently in Hanoi, sharing session named Engineering the Future addressed the future challenges for society and what engineers have to offer using developments in sustainability, health care and new technologies to improve the quality of life for all in the coming century. Participants will also learn about advantages and job prospect of studying engineering through this meet and greet with Sterling Group's professors. Thật ra là mình rất có hy vọng là có thể học thạc sĩ về ngành phát à, kinh tế phát triển, trong đó có một phần là liên quan đến phát triển bền vững. Hội thảo ngày hôm nay qua bài giảng của thầy thì mình à, cảm thấy về lĩnh vực kỹ thuật rất là hứng thú mặc dù nó không phải là chuyên ngành trước đây của mình, nhưng nó có thể bổ sung một chút kiến thức cho mình để có thể tạo thêm động lực động lực cho mình để tham gia vào à để đăng ký học ngành thạc sĩ về phát triển bền vững. Theo mình thì khoa học kỹ thuật luôn luôn là một trong số những vấn đề mấu chốt cho sự phát triển của bất kỳ quốc gia nào, chứ không chỉ nguyên là Việt Nam. Việt Nam hiện tại thì đang là đất nước đang trên đà phát triển và nhất là những cái liên quan đến cơ sở hạ tầng về kỹ thuật trong cuộc sống thì nó sẽ gắn liền rất nhiều đến đời sống cũng như thậm chí là nó sẽ là nền tảng để phát triển kinh tế bởi vì theo mình được biết thì trên thế giới có rất là nhiều nước họ lớn mạnh nhiều việc là làm kinh tế trên ngành khoa học kỹ thuật thế nên là theo mình thì đây cũng có thể là một cái hướng đi mới cho Việt Nam trong thời gian tới khi mà uh, có rất là nhiều các bạn trẻ ở Việt Nam các kỹ sư ở Việt Nam được thế giới đánh giá rất cao về trình độ chuyên môn trong lĩnh vực này so share with us on how um, engineering play the role in the development process of any nations. We have a, an, economy, an economy that uh, requires development. You know, people are always looking for solutions to problems and that's what engineers give us, things that solve problems. Now you may say globally that engineering has caused problems. So we have pollution, we have climate change, and you know that can be linked to things like motor cars and, and the oil industry but I think actually that's a little bit unfair because most of that is due to the fact there are too many people on the planet uh, but nevertheless if, if engineering has, has contributed let's say to these problems it's only engineers that are going to find solutions so ways of, of producing energy without pollution and ways of uh, you know making cars that don't pollute for example um, in terms of Vietnam, um, 
I'm not an economist, but my understanding is that at the moment Vietnam is on a very steep growth rate uh, economically. So I think if you look at uh, other countries, you know, Japan, uh, Korea, China, that are further along that curve, um, the question has to be whether Vietnam can continue to develop as they have done. And I think there you have to move away from making other people's things to designing your own things. And this is where the engineers come in. So for example, when I was a child in the 60s, Japan had a reputation for making cheap copies. 20 years later in the 80s, they'd already become world leaders in the design of consumer electronics. And for that, you need the engineers. And that's why I think Vietnam is doing the right thing by placing a lot of focus from the government down on developing its engineering and research capabilities. I know that you have shared this um, in these sharing se sessions, but I would like you to share with our viewers at home about some of the opportunities that the engineering students would have after they graduate. We're speaking about UK universities, but I think this is a global thing, that a student uh, graduating with a good degree, which in the UK means a, a 2-1 or a 1st, we have these classifications, then they have virtually a 100% chance of employ employment because there is a, a real demand out there for good engineers. So you, 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 you have to be good. In terms of personal benefit, um, I saw some uh, figures from, from my colleague Steve Bull, who's speaking at the moment, which suggests that over a career, uh, the average salary of an engineer varies between uh, sort of 50 to 90,000 US dollars, depending on the particular engineering subject. Uh, and interestingly, all the major engineering subjects have a higher average lifetime salary than would be the case for students doing a business degree. Now, a lot of people think are surprised by that. They think lots of people do business because they think they're going to make a lot of money. But actually the figures don't really support that. And lastly, for young people who are facing the choice of uh, universities, uh, entries, um, and they have so many choices, how, what are the advices that you share with them that maybe th help them in order to know if engineering is a suitable uh, stream for them to take on with their career? But I have to say that if students are thinking whether or not to do engineering, certainly it helps to have the, the, the reward of a high salary at the end of it, but I would urge them to think about whether they find it interesting, because if you're going to get a degree, and particularly if you're going to get a higher degree, a master's for example, motivation is really important. So you've got to be interested in the subject, so you need to determine beforehand, perhaps through reading, uh, or perhaps uh, you can watch courses online now to check that it's a subject that interests you because otherwise you won't do your best. So my main advice at university is to find something that really motivates you. So thank you uh, Mr. David so much for all of your sharing today and I hope that you have a fantastic time um, talking and sharing um, your experience with our Vietnamese student. And that's the end of Sharing Vietnam today. Thank you so much for watching us and I hope that this show has maybe boost up some of your interest about engineering stream, especially if you are a Vietnamese student who uh, are watching this show. Any questions and recommendations, please email to us at sharingvietnam at netvittv.net. Thank you and see you again.